Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to add one-sided box shadows to design elements in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so right now I'm in my admin dashboard. So we're going to start off by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages and click on add new. So we're going to give this page a name and I'm just going to call this one-sided box shadows. Click on use the Divi builder and then we're going to go straight to the visual builder. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to choose a pre-made layout. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then we're going to use the therapist layout pack. So I'm going to scroll down and search for it. Okay, so now that we have our therapist layout pack, I'm going to go with the uh, therapist FAQ page. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to load the layout. Next, we need to come to uh, this section right here. So what we're going to do is we are going to change the column structure. So I'm going to click this icon here and then we're going to change this to a three column structure. Next, we are going to select these three and move them over to the third column. Now, there's an easiest way to, the easiest way to do this is to use the multi select. So I'm going to hold down the command key and then I'm going to uh, select what I need to move over just like that. And then with all these selected, I'm going to move them over to the right. So now we have a gap here in the middle. In fact, we might as well drag this title. The next stage now is to go into our row settings. So I'm going to come over here to uh, this little gear icon. So what we need to do here is to increase this, uh, the width. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing, and then I'm going to click on use custom width. Right. So over here, we need to change this unit to percentage, and this is going to be fine at 80%. And then for our gutter width, we're going to set this to two. Now the gutter width is the space between these columns. And then finally, we need to equalize the column height. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now it's time to design the toggle modules. So I'm going to come over here. In fact, I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go into this gear icon. But now we can actually design this all at the same time by using the multi select. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to hold on my command key and select all these. Next, I'm going to click on the gear icon. Right, so let's go to the design tab and um, we need to go into the toggle. So for the open toggle text color, I'm going to change this to white. For the open toggle background color, I'm going to click here on this eyedropper tool. And this time this is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag this all the way down. And then I'm going to add my value between these brackets. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors, as I'm using in this tutorial, I will leave a link to that in the description below. Next, we're going to come over here to the close toggle text color. We're going to set this to white. And then moving on, the close toggle background color needs to be the color that I've just added here, which is full transparency. So I'm just going to come over here and add it as I did before by placing it between the brackets. Next, we need to uh, change our body text color. So I'm just going to click here on this um, little brush tool. So this is going to take us to a body color. So we're going to change our body color and make it white so we can read it much easier. Now it's time to add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So we are going to start off with uh, custom padding, padding of the top and the bottom. And the value we're going to use is 3VW. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to paste that. So you can see now that 3VW has been applied both to the top and the bottom. For the left and right, we're going to set this to 2VW. Okay, so I'm just going to paste my value in here like that. Now it's time to add our box shadow. So I'm going to come over here to my box shadow and we are going to go with this one right here. So I'm going to select it and it's time now to add our value. So let's start off with our box shadow horizontal position and this needs to be set at minus 30. So I'm going to add it here. Our vertical position needs to be set at zero. The spread strength needs to be set at minus 35. The blur strength needs to be set at 40. And then finally, we're going to come over here on our shadow color and I'm going to paste my value between the brackets. Great. We're going to save our settings. Right. So what we need to do next is to add this shadow over to the right. So to do that, we need to do the multi select again. So I'm going to hold down the command key and then select all the modules. Click on the gear icon to go into the element settings on design and then we're going to come over here to the box shadow so for the horizontal position instead of having it at minus 30 let's save it as 30 pixels and that's going to shift it over to the right 
then we're going to save our settings and click away. Our next text is to add the one-sided box shadows to the columns. So to do this, we're going to use a bit of CSS. And again, the CSS snippet that I'm going to use throughout this tutorial can be found in the post that I'll link to in the show notes below. Right, so to do that, we're going to come over here to our row settings, click on advanced, and then we're going to come over here to custom CSS. Go to column one main element, and then I'm going to paste my CSS like that. And now we can see that our shadow is now showing over here. Next, we need to add our shadow to column three. So I'm just going to scroll down here and go to column three main element. And again, I'm going to paste uh, this CSS code. And now we have our shadows. And then finally, we're going to save. And then we're going to add our blur modules onto column two. So I'm going to click this plus button, search for my blur module. And it's right here, so I'm going to select it. Next, we're going to delete the uh, title and the contents because we don't need this. All we need here is going to be the icon. So next, I'm going to come over here to image and icon, click on use icon, and then I'm going to search for the icon that I need. Now it's time to go into the design settings. So I'm going to click the design tab. So the first thing I need to do now is to add a color to my, to my icon. So I'm going to click this drop down here, uh, click on the eyedropper tool. So my color here is going to be an RGBA value. So I'm just going to drag the slider down and then paste my value between the brackets, just like that. Next, I'm going to come over here to icon font size, activate this to yes, and then we're going to use a value of 20 VW. So now you can see it's nice and big, but of course you can always adjust this to whatever size you want. And then finally, we're going to come over here to the margin. So I'm going to click on spacing. And for the margin here, we're going to add a zero to the bottom. Okay, so we're done here. I'm going to save. And then next, we're just going to duplicate this by clicking this little arrow here. And then next, we're going to go into the top blurb module. So I'm going to click this gear icon. And then over here on image and icon, I'm going to choose a different icon. And this time, we're going to go with the question mark. I'm going to select it, click on the design tab, and we are going to change the icon size and also the width. Okay, so my icon size, I'm gonna come over here to image and icon and I'm gonna change this and set this at 9VW. And then I'm gonna change the width and set it to 4%, to 40%. So I'm gonna search for my width here. So right now it's set at 100%, so I'm gonna set this to 40%. And then we need to align this to the right, so I'm just gonna search for my alignment and set this to the right. And then we also need to set the custom margin of minus two VW. So I'm gonna search for margin. Okay, so we're gonna save this. And then again, we're just gonna duplicate this and drag it below this bubble. So I'm gonna drag it right here below like that. And then we're gonna go in and make some changes to this. So I'm gonna click on the gear icon, click on design sizing. So over here it's found 40%, but what we need to do now is to align this to the left. So I'm going to click here to align it to the left. And then for the custom margin, we're going to come over here to spacing. And we're going to add a custom margin of minus 4VW. Okay, and then we're going to save. Okay, so the next stage now is to make sure that we are going to center this middle blurb right here. So to achieve that, we need to come over here to our row settings. Click on advanced, custom CSS. And then we're going to go into column two main element. So I'm going to scroll down here and all we need to do is to paste this CSS code. So now this ensures that this will always be centered at all times. So I'm going to go ahead now and save. Right, so the next stage now is to center this text that we have right here on the top. So just to make things faster, I'm just going to go ahead and select it. And then I'm going to select the other one as well at the same time, click on the gear icon. And then I'm going to come over here to design text and then I'm going to search for my text orientation and center this. Great, so I'm going to save and then the next stage now is to change my background color just to make this design easy on the eye. So to do, to do that, I'm going to come over here to my section settings, click on background and then I'm going to click the second tab, click the plus button because what we're going to do here is to add a gradient. So I'm going to click here on my first color and paste my color in here. I'm going to go for my second color and again, I'm going to paste my value in here, just like that. And as I mentioned before, if you want to use the same values as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post 
in the description below so you can go ahead and use the exact same values. So pretty much this is our design. So I'm going to go ahead now and save this. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. And if you have any questions regarding this tutorial, please leave your questions in the comments box below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.